Today we're going to talk about five different remedies for PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome. They're, most of them are maybe not free, but very, very cheap, and you can implement them at home. Hey everybody, Chad Cruiser here with Health and Homestead. So what is PCOS, or polycystic ovary syndrome? It is a syndrome where women begin to produce excess androgens which are male sex hormones and this causes all kinds of trouble and we're going to look at that so what are some of the symptoms of PCOS number one is trouble conceiving or infertility so often women with PCOS have trouble getting pregnant now this is not the only factor but this is one of the potential factors for causing somebody to be infertile and this may be from PCOS number two is mood changes maybe you're struggling with these fluctuating mood changes once again this is not the only reason but this is a potential factor in PCOS number three is acne maybe you're really struggling with oily skin that has you know ends up having acne pimples and so forth and so that can be caused by PCOS also number four is fatigue now there's many reasons for fatigue you could be just not going to bed on time or not sleeping enough at night but it also could be that you have PCOS another symptom of PCOS is insulin resistance insulin helps the sugar that we eat to make its way into our cells to give us energy and to give us fuel but we can have insulin resistance and one of the potential causes of that can be PCOS or one of the symptoms anyway. The next one is excessive hair growth. This is called hirsutism. So this is women having body hair, whether it's facial hair or on other portions of the body having excess hair growth. And we're gonna look at a remedy for that, a simple cheap remedy. The next symptom of PCOS is weight changes or maybe struggling with keeping off the weight. And then obviously right in the name of PCOS is ovarian cysts. Having cysts on the ovaries, these are these liquid filled sacs on the ovaries. The next one is irregular periods. Maybe your periods have just kind of gone by the wayside or maybe they're just irregular. That can be a symptom of PCOS. Male pattern baldness or thinning of the hair. And the last point that we're looking at is excess testosterone or these male sex hormones and this is probably one of the reasons for that hair loss okay so we see the symptoms of PCOS but what are some of the remedies that you can be begin to implement in rather cheaply to potentially help this malady Here's a study out of the journal Nutrients. The title of the study is Effect of Curcumin on Glycemic Control and Lipid Profile and Polycystic Ovary Syndrome. So let's look at it. A meta-analysis of three randomized controlled trials looked at the impact of curcumin on PCOS. In the studies, the women were given 500 milligrams of curcumin between one to three times daily. Now, once again, since there's multiple studies, one study, they may try 500 milligrams once a day, another study they may do three times a day. What was the result? They found that it lowered fasting glucose, fasting insulin, and lowered cholesterol. Now, as we've already found, insulin resistance is one of the factors, one of the symptoms of PCOS. And so taking something like curcumin, originally found in something like turmeric or turmeric, you can actually find it in these little roots. We've cooked them in the past before. You, you, want, you don't want to just eat the turmeric on its own. You can also take it at, in a pill form, and that's an option. I'm going to have some links down below, some affiliate links that you can check out. But here is a potential option to help you with your insulin resistance in your PCOS. Here's another one, marjoram and PCOS. Marjoram was used as a folk remedy for regulating the menstrual cycle. So a pilot study was conducted to discover if there are benefits for this herb in a double-blind randomized placebo-controlled trial in women with PCOS. It turned out that those who were taking marjoram benefited their hormone profile in improving insulin sensitivity and lowering levels of adrenal androgens. This is great. Marjoram, which I would actually be more prone to suggesting people take than even the curcumin, by going straight to the marjoram, which is an herb, a natural herb that people naturally cook with, by using this, you may lower those levels of male hormones in the body, but at the same time, be lowering levels of insulin resistance, which is one of the factors, once again. Since this was a pilot study, it suggested that the results were only preliminary and other studies should be conducted. But what about 
hirsutism or this excessive hair growth. Here's a study with 21 women who were enrolled in this study. 12 of the women had polycystic ovary syndrome and nine of the women had idiopathic hirsutism. They began drinking spearmint tea two times a day for five days, and this produced a significant drop in free testosterone. The trouble was in this study, there was no control group. So the good news is another study was conducted on spearmint, and here's spearmint tea with women with PCOS. A randomized control trial was done on 42 women over a 30-day period. They were divided into two groups, one group having spearmint tea two times a day, while the other group had a placebo herb tea, and the spearmint group had a significant drop in testosterone levels. So out of these two studies, it seems evidently that it does help women. So if you have high levels of testosterone, excessive uh, body hair growth, using something as simple as spearmint tea may be something that could help you. So one other factor that can be absolutely totally free as a natural remedy to help fight PCOS is exercise. Let's look at the research. A meta-analysis was reported in the journal Frontiers in Physiology looking at studies on exercise in women struggling with PCOS. The research clearly reveals that vigorous cardiovascular exercise has been beneficial in women with PCOS in lowering insulin resistance and weight. This is something that anybody could get out and do as long as you have the physical capability of doing it. Getting out, I mean, in the beginning, you could do something as simple as a brisk walk. How much better to, you know, if you can, if you can jog or do something along those lines. And if you can't, maybe even stair stepping, that's a great thing. That's not hard. It's not a violent exercise. It really gets the heart rate up, which once again is cardiovascular exercise. And the last factor, which you have to do it anyway, is the way that you eat. And by not eating any refined foods, and when I say refined, I mean anything refined, any refined food can, in some cases, increase the likelihood of having insulin resistance. Refined sugars in the diet, we all know that that can create blood sugar issues. But another thing that can do it simply is refined fats. Many people don't know that refined fats, too, too much excess fat mixed with the sugar can create insulin resistance. You know what you could do is you could just do a simple test. You could try going two months with no refined foods whatsoever, the two month challenge. And when I say no refined foods whatsoever, that means nothing that has refined sugar in it, nothing that has refined fat in it. It. Meaning humans were not designed to eat refined foods. We weren't made for that. We were made to eat, you know, foods just as they are. And so I would challenge you, give that a try and see what happens in your own life. And you could also try some of these natural remedies. Now, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification. We have videos on scientific studies on natural remedies on a host of different diseases and ailments. We also talk about country living because this is health and homestead. So if you like the video, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notifications. God bless and have a fantastic day.